Good morning, afternoon, or good evening. My name is Madison, and I'm going to be talking about the 2022 Minnesota State 4 H Horse Show pattern. This video is specifically looking at the equitation patterns. Uh, like I said, my name is Madison. I am a Minnesota 4 H alumni, and I have experience showing in AQHA shows at a local and regional level, as well as the current Minnesota 4 H Northwest adult, one of the adult representatives. So, uh, if you have not watched one of the other videos for this year or last year, I would like to thank you for clicking on this video and watching it. And as far as what I like to do when I go through these videos, um, I will go through the patterns that are given to you in such a way as I would if I myself were showing those patterns. So, you want to... The things on the left, kind of the top left, that I want you to ask yourself. What is the judge looking for? What's going to be difficult or easy in general, as well as for you and your horse? Where do you need to be and where do you need to be going? What do you need to think about in order to get there? As well as how are you going to plan for success? So before you go to the warm-up pen, you should have um, a checklist of things to bring with you. Personally, for me, this was fly spray, a brush or a rag. Um, for the equitation, you probably want to have a rag of some sort to wipe down your boots. You want your boots to be clean when you go in. All of your tack and equipment, as well as your number. For all Minnesota 4-H riding events, you are required to have your number on both sides of your saddle pad during any class. That is so the judge can see your number at all times. So without further ado, let's get into the patterns. For equitation grades six through nine, uh, your pattern is on the right. The directions are, well, I didn't remove the directions for this one because the pattern is decently sized, uh, but the directions are also on the left. And I would like you to think about some of those things that we talked about before on the first slide, as far as, you know, how are you going to have a plan to be successful before you go into the pen with your horse. As far as what I would look at when I see these, um, so first off, you need to be ready at A. Because the first thing you do is back, you wanna start with your horse's nose, even with the cone. You're then going to back four steps they're then going to walk ahead two horse lengths, which is about eight steps. So you're going to walk past A a little bit. You're then going to pick up the trot and get your right diagonal as quickly as you can. Please remember for equitation, if you don't get your diagonal the first time or the first try, you are much better off trying to you know sit to and then post on the correct diagonal then you are just ignoring it you're going to place better or the judge will give you not necessarily points back but you're better off doing that than just ignoring it because from the judge's point of view if you ignore it they have no idea whether or not you're even aware that you're on the incorrect diagonal or not so you always want to change your diagonal if you're wrong Obviously, you hope that you get it correct. Make sure you practice that in your warm up. Then, what you're going to do, I'm going to get my laser pointer so we can walk through this. At A, back, walk two horse lengths, posting trot on the right diagonal. You're going to go around B. So, this blue is the path I personally would take. You do not want to end up being right on top of these cones. Cones are simply a marker for you. They don't necessarily dictate where you have to be at all times. While the pattern is drawn for you to be super close, as long as you follow directions, which is around B in this general shape, you're fine. Obviously, you don't want to make like a huge, you know, shape that is not the shape here, but you also don't need to be on top of the cones. So go past D or past B, then curve around. So if you do this shape, you have way more time to get lined up for when you need to lope compared to if you make this shape that they have drawn. That makes sense. 
once you get around the uh, tur your curve, you're going to pick up the left lead and lope to the middle, where you're then going to perform a simple lead change. If you listen to my horsemanship video, I'm going to just explain simple lead changes again. If not, here you go. A simple lead change is you going from a lope or canter to a trot back up into a lope on the opposite lead. You do not stop and you do not walk. You simply come from a lope, you trot one or two strides, and then ask your horse back up into the lope on the opposite lead. What I would do <clears throat> is a little bit before my halfway point is where I'm going to ask my horse to start and break down to the trot. So that way my transition back up into the lope is at your halfway point. You want to do that because if it takes you longer or if something goes wrong, maybe your horse doesn't actually change leads. If you wait until you are at the middle or past it before you ask your horse to trot change, you don't have any time to fix it just in case something goes wrong. So you're better off changing a smidgen early than a smidgen late. So you've changed, you're now on the right lead. You're then going to sit, then you are going or you're sitting. Sorry, I should have. Okay, <clears throat> let's go back up to our first trot, right? Come up this line, you finished your curve. Sit from your post before you ask your horse to lope off. You shouldn't just be posting and then, like, it's, it's not pretty. It's not you helping balance and support your horse through your transition. You need to sit and then ask your horse to lope. Okay. Now that I went back and fixed that, um, once you get uh, 2C, and again, follow this blue line that I made, not their black line, you're going to give yourself enough room here that you have a little bit of time on this curve to get your left diagonal. And then you're just going to continue all the way down, still posting past D. I would say, you know, it says the pattern is complete after you've passed D. I would go another couple of horse lengths past it in your straight line and then go to the rail. And then I imagine they'll have you, if the rail is over here, they'll just have you loop over to the rail and then just follow it all the way out. Personally, I would not try and loop back to the right and exit because you're going to be interfering with whoever is coming in at the start of their pattern. So you would want to uh, curve to the left to the rail unless the ring store tells you differently if they tell you to just you know go right and whatever you do that if they tell you to go left do that as well but personally what I'm pretty sure they're gonna have you do is turn left and go to the rail and just follow your rail out <clears throat> um, there's really nothing tricky in this pattern you're uh, going from the right diagonal into the left lead, which is what you would normally do on the rail, and then from the right lead down into the left diagonal, which again is exactly what you would do on the rail. The, uh, the main thing you guys need to be aware of is <clears throat> getting your diagonals quickly and correctly without looking down. I know it's hard. Make sure you practice in your warm-up pen, feeling which diagonal you're on. It takes a long time. Some people, it just comes natural for them versus others. And sometimes the horse's movement makes a really big difference too. If you have a very smooth horse, it's a lot of times harder to tell which diagonal you're on. So practice getting your diagonals in the warm up pen. Practice quick transitions. If you listen to my horsemanship, same exact thing. Don't just go and warm up and do like five circles to the right, five circles to the left and call it good. You should practice doing, you know, a walk to a lope, a trot to a stop and like a bunch of different transitions just to get your horse listening to you before you go in. That is everything I have for you guys. Good luck. I know this is going to be the last day, so you guys are probably going to be really tired. Your horse is going to be really tired. So make sure your expectations for you and your horse align with what you've been practicing at home. Okay, have a safe ride and good luck. Grades 10 plus. Interesting. 
Okay, grades 10 plus. I seem to have not done this correctly, but that's okay. So, <clears throat> you're going to start before A, which means how far before A? Because it just says walk to A. If you have a small horse, you don't need to start quite as far away, but I would say you should start about a horse length and a half, two horse lengths away from A. You don't want to be, you know, so far away that it looks like you're scared of the cone or that you're not in the pattern at all. But you also don't want to start right on top of the cone either because you need to show your horse at a walk before you're entered into the pattern. I have these blue lines. Those are your sitting trot. The regular dash lines are your posting trot. I did that simply so it's easier to distinguish, you know, what's happening. <clears throat> Sorry, my, uh, my throat's bugging me. Okay, I'm going to walk, then going to do a sitting trot. So anytime you do a sitting trot in the equitation, this is not a Western class. It should not be a jog. However, that being said, it does not need to be as big of a trot as your posting trot. So practice in your warm up, going from sitting trot to different gates, in and out of it, all that stuff. Um, in order to have a nice seat and leg at the sitting trot, you need to have all, pretty much all of your weight in your feet and your heels down. If you don't have your heels down or not, you know, your leg isn't in the proper spot, you're not going to sit nice. You're going to bounce around. So just keep that in mind. If you feel like you're bouncing around a lot, you're probably a little bit too stiff and you don't have your weight in your heels enough. Maddie's quick tips. Once you've done your sitting trot, you're going to go halfway to uh, B. Note this halfway mark is very important, both for when you're coming back at the trot and also halfway in relation to where your uh, lead change is going to be. <clears throat> so you're going to come through halfway. You're going to pick up the left diagonal, so rise and fall with the left front leg. You're going to continue straight. I would then sit a little bit, so they have this as like a fairly sharp turn in your transition. And if you listen to my other videos, I will say, I don't like doing a transition on a curve or a bending line or anything like that. So I would come in and have my trot here. So I'm going this way before B. So I'd cut this a little bit short. And then you're gonna sit. And this is very, very important. You need to sit before you start loping in this situation in particular, because you're going to be asking your horse to counter canter this arc. When you're counter cantering, and hopefully you are comfortable asking your horse for both leads, and it's not just, you know, bend their head and kick and hope they get the right lead, you should sit in this situation asking for the left lead. You're going to use your right leg push your hips, your horse's hip to the left, shape their body, keep their neck straight and lope them off. Whenever you're counter cantering, especially if they, they set this pattern up a little bit smaller, which I don't anticipate them doing because it's in the Coliseum, that arena is massive. But rather than thinking of pulling your horse around your curve, think of pushing their hip to the, the left and pushing their hip around to help them turn. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't want to tell you to practice counter cantering a ton in the warm-up pen, but you should definitely do it a little bit both ways so you can get a better feel for it. When it says at the top of your arc, they're just talking about, you know, halfway in between. Presumably this half is going to look the same as this half. Hopefully, ideally it does. You're then going to change leads. When it just says change leads, that is open to you to decide whether you want to do a simple or flying lead change. I am going to assume the same thing that I did in the horsemanship, that if you are watching my video, you probably don't have a trainer. And if that is the case, you more than likely don't have a horse that has been properly trained how to do flying lead changes or that you don't practice them regularly. <clears throat> 
If not, that's great, and I'm glad to hear it, and more power to you. But if you do not regularly practice flying lead changes or have a horse that has been properly trained to do them, please do not expect your horse or ask your horse to do a flying lead change. Just do a simple lead change. A simple lead change is going from the lope or canter to a trot back up to the lope or canter on the opposite lead that you started with. You do not stop, nor do you walk in between. You lope, trot, one or two strides, ask for the lope again. You're going to sit that entire time as well. You're not going to post. You are then going to be on the right lead, which is in making a circle or a curve in this direction as shown, is the correct lead, so you're no longer counter cantering. You're then going to come down to C, sit, ask your horse to trot. You're going to pick up the right diagonal, which from the right lead picking up the right diagonal would be the incorrect diagonal. Yeah, so they have you in both situations going from the left diagonal into the left lead and then the right diagonal into the right lead or the right lead to the right diagonal. That's actually a good way to remember it. Just remember left left and then right right um, if you're confused on which one you're supposed to be doing. So it's going to feel awkward when you go from the right lead into the right diagonal because that is the opposite of what you would typically do on the rail. So also practice that a couple times in the warm-up pen. Practice saying, okay, I am loping around in my warm-up pen on the left lead. I want to break down and get the left diagonal. Then, then do that a couple times. It's going to feel awkward. Um, compared to normal, so just practice that a couple times. Once you get to the middle of your arena, again, you should have a marker in mind where this halfway point is. That can that marker can be anything. It can be a you know if you're the twentieth person going, maybe everyone else has tracks in the same place. You can use that. You do you. I don't necessarily recommend it, but whatever is best for you and your horse. You can use posters that are on the sides of the arena. You can use uh, whatever you think helps. And then going to sit at the halfway point, you're going to really push your heel down, hold yourself, core is tight, but your hips are going to move with your horse. Once your nose, the horse's nose is even with D between their nose and shoulder, you're gonna stop, back four steps, it says approximately a horse length, so if the back is going really, really well, you can do about six. But once you get more than six steps, it's like, is that really a horse length anymore? So your discretion there. And then please do not forget to exit at a sitting trot. You are still being judged. How you exit matters. So remember to exit at a sitting trot. If it helps you to remember, you are not allowed to trot or you're not allowed to walk in that pen except for the very beginning when you enter. You're not allowed to trot or, or you're not allowed to go slower than a trot at any other point. So grade 10 plus equitation. I hope that helps. That is all I have for you. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments and good luck. I know it's mon it's going to be Monday when you're showing, so you're probably going to be really tired and your horses might be crabby, so just take everything in stride, pun intended, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, don't expect more out of your horse than what you would normally expect of them at home. Have realistic expectations for both you and your horse. Good luck and have a good ride. Your saddle seat equitation. So last year, you guys had a separate pattern than the other age groups. And it's totally possible that my uh, super cool, super secret, uh, aka mom, that is my informant for sending me pictures of patterns, uh, just didn't see your guys' pattern. I, I had her double check, but I assume you are just going to do the same pattern that is for your age group. Uh, at which case, you can go back and just watch those ones. Uh, if the pattern is different, I am very, very sorry. Um, but please double check uh, what your guys' pattern is supposed to be, because typically 
in the past, from what I've remembered, you have a different pattern. So I'm a little bit confused, but that's okay. But you guys, make sure. I know you're going to do great. And that is all I have for the equitation. Thank you for watching this video. This will be the last one I am making for 2022 for the state Minnesota State 4-H Worship Patterns. If you have any questions, you can comment them below. If you have any suggestions or if you would like me to make videos on other things, maybe you just want to hear my opinion on things, that's cool. Uh, maybe you want me to tell you about some of my favorite uh, things to use. Do I recommend doing certain certain things with my horse? Uh, I have a video talking about my favorite bits, so if you would like something along those lines, I can do that again. I would love to show you different exercises with a horse. However, I am currently horseless, so that makes it a little bit difficult. But if, you know, I get a ton of people asking me to do something along those lines, I can possibly ask a friend if I can borrow their horse for a video. So thank you. Good luck. And in, yeah, good luck. It's Monday. You guys are going to be super tired. Please remember to thank your parents or guardians, whoever brought you to the show. 